last time. This is the last example we stopped with and to show the truncation error. And my objective is to find the integration from three to nine. So basically, this is the area that I am intending to calculate. This is the whole area. And obviously, you can see here, without even going through the calculation, that approximating this with two rectangular area is really a bad approximation. But to quantify this, if you want to do the calculations for that, so the numerical method calculation, so this is what I have. So I have a curve. This curve is x squared. This is x squared. It is from 3 to 9. This is what I want to do the calculation. So I said, OK, I will have from 3 to 6, one rectangular, and from 6 to 9, another rectangular. That's my approximation. Okay, so I want to find this area and this area, and then I will calculate the exact the exact solution. So if we start with the a numerical method, so it goes from uh, three to nine x squared dx. So this will become the area these two areas. So this will becomes the multiplication of the length times the width. The width it takes to be uh, three, and this is the length. So this is whatever the number is here, whatever the number is there, which is coming from x squared. So this will become equal to 3 squared, which is this, times the width, which is 3, plus the length, which is 6 squared, times the width, which is so if you do the calculations, you will find this is equal to 135. On the other hand, if I do, I want to do the calculations, finding the exact solution. So this will equal to x cubed divided by 3 from 3 to 9. And if I calculate this, I will find this is equal to 234. And you can see huge difference between the two. So this is definitely a bad approximation for the integration. And we will learn uh, later on, okay, this is making it, if this is the area, what if I make the rectangular areas with is just one instead of three. So you can see here now, if I start to make this three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, you can see now, this would be a way better approximation than this one. So here, this is, comes the idea of the truncation error. As I make the area smaller, I make more rectangulars to represent this as I'm approaching the, the, actual, the actual answer. So this is what I want to say about the truncation error. Now we will move to uh, something else, which is the binary representations, which is in its own Another source of error, this is something that we have to understand, which is how the computer understands numbers. We humans deal with numbers in a uh, in certain way, but the computers will deal with the numbers in totally different way. And we will see this in today's lecture. So the number as human we deal with is the base 10. Uh, these are the numbers that we deal with, like uh, 10.467, 9.824, etc. So this is the number, and we can put that in a, a summation of a series uh, represented by as such, di times 10 to the power of, goes from minus infinity to n. Okay, so let me give you an example. So I can uh, represent this number, 257.76, as 2 times 10 to the power of 2, plus 5 10 to the power of 1, plus 7 times 10 to the power of 0, which is 1, plus, now I'm going after the digit, which is 7 times 10 to the minus 1, plus 6 times 10 to minus 2. So I can represent this, as you can see here, in turn as something like this in that uh, regard. We have here all these tens that goes from uh, minus two to two in this case. Uh, 
And we have uh, in front of this center of the power is different Ds. Uh, so the digit D0, which is this one, D0 because that 10 is associated with the number zero, and D to the minus one, which is this one, associated with 10 to the minus one, are separated by a point, we call it the decimal point. That's something that we already know. And the digit DN, which is in this case the two, is called the most significant digit. And the one that has the lowest value of I, okay, uh, which is called the least significant digit. In this case, it is the number number six. So, so, so this is something that we deal with whenever we want to do any hand calculations ourselves. Uh, this is the numbering system called base ten. Now, in the computer, as you may be aware of, we don't use base ten. Instead, we use base two. Okay, uh, so this is all the math is using a binary system. It's a zero or one. So it is. Uh, base 2, so we have only two uh, different possibilities, either 0 or 1. Base 10, we have from 0 to 9. You have 10 different different numbers here. And the sing single binary number is called a bit. So with the same notation I used for the decimal points, uh, this is the notation for the base 2. So the only difference here is this 2. And instead of having it as 10, it is becomes 2. Okay, so for example, this number 1011.0011 and space 2, so this is equal to uh, the first one here is 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 2, uh, etc. And this, if you want to convert this from this to a decimal, uh, decimal notation. Okay, now here, just uh, as a vocabulary, between B0 and B minus one, which is in this case between this and this, which is this dot, we don't call it a decimal point, we call it a radix. That's this is, uh, the name we call for it. Okay, uh, so let's see how we do this conversion, how we convert from decimal to uh, binary. Okay, so if we have the number 14, okay, so how we can uh, do that? So we basically, this is the number, 14. So we divide by two. So we divide by two, okay? So this becomes equal to seven. And we write here the remi reminder of the division, which is zero. Then I again divide by two, and this is three, and here it is one. Then I divide again by two, so this is equal to one, and the reminder is also one. Then I divide by two, so here where we stop when this reaches zero, and this becomes equal to one. And when I want to find the equivalent, I go in this direction. So my number, the 14, base of 10 is equal to 1110 base of 2. And if you want to take this back, 1110, this is equal to 1 times 2 to the power of 3 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 2 plus 1 times 2 to the power of 1 plus 0 times 2 to the power of 0. So this is 8 plus 4, 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. So we went back without any error exactly. We found the exact uh, number. But that's not always the case, especially when we deal with uh, decimals. When we deal with decimals, it's totally a different, different point, as we will see. So here, we want to convert a number, which is 0.23255 base 10 to the binary, and we want to use five bits to approximate this, okay? So when we convert a decimal after the decimal point, fraction, uh, we do not, uh, we don't divide, but rather we multiply, so we do the opposite, okay? So we will start with this, 
point two three two five I will multiply it by two which is equal to point four six five then I will put here the number after the decimal which is this one which is here it is uh, zero then I will take this number again and I will multiply it, which is 0.465 times 2, which is equal to 0.93. Again, the number before the decimal is equal to 0. I will take this one, 0.93 times 2 is equal to 1.86. So the number here is one so I will take one here the one before the decimal so here always I take this number this number out the one which is the 0.86 again times 2 which is equal to 1.72 again the number here is 1 so this is 0.72 and I will multiply this by 2 and this is equal to 1.44 and there is a one, so we'll just take it a one. And since the question says five bits, I will stop here. So the this number, the point two three two five is equal or approximately equal because I have a truncation that is stopped after five digits, is equal to zero one one one. Now we go this way. So this is the base two. Okay. Now the question is, how much actually is this number? If I want to try to go back from binary to decimal, how close is this? So if I want to take this number, which is 0 0.00111, and I want to move from binary representation into a decimal representation how much we have okay so this equal to uh, zero times two to the minus one this one then zero times two to the minus two plus zero times sorry one because this is the third number times two to the minus three plus one times two to the minus four plus one times two to the minus five, which is equal to 0.21875, which is around five to 6% error with this number, okay? So here, and this is another source of error, which is when I convert from the decimal point to the binary system that is understood by the computer, in many cases, there will be sort of truncation, approximation. So if I want to go back, this is the number that I will get in the computer, although this is the number I used, of course, because I used a low number of bits. Now, if I increase the number of bits, I will have a much better uh, approximation. OK, now let's start a practice or a tradition, if you may, in this course which is the bonus tradition. So I will do that from time to time, give you a bonus question, and I will ask you to solve a question in different ways. This time what I want you to do, uh, if you go to learn, please, uh, you will go to Dropbox and you will find a bonus question number one. So what I will do right now, I will give you a question and I will ask you to write the solution uh, with steps, not just the final answer, okay? With steps, so I'll give you like five minutes to do that. And the, then you can submit. I will check later on. I will see the first one because the time will be there. So the first one to submit the right answer, he or she will get 0.5 bonus uh, percent, will be added to uh, his or her grade at the end of the term. So I like to... Uh, give those bonus questions from time to time uh, so that will be more interactive instead of just listening to me 
uh, we will, so I will try almost in every class to do something like this. Uh, to have more interaction between me and you, and to test your understanding of the uh, of the topic. Okay, so please go to learn, open this, and let me give you the question. So the question is, and I will solve it, but uh, uh, I will verify who gave the best answer or the correct answer the fastest. So you have to achieve two criteria: you have to be correct, and you have to be the fastest. Okay. So the question is. Uh, convert the following number uh, into uh, into uh, binary, so it is 263.3. So what we did, we did only numbers without uh, a fraction or a fraction without number. Now you need to do each one alone and then combine both of them. And you give me what is the final the final answer okay so i will give you like five minutes and see how many of you can can do it uh, please you have to take a picture scan it's good exercise also to know how to deal with the quiz because this is what you're going to do you will submit your answer to to dropbox okay go ahead so uh, time is uh, 11 40 Nine, I will give you until 11, let's say 55. This will give me some relief also. Uh, I'm having bad allergies since yesterday. A lot of sneezing, nothing serious, but just sneezing, very annoying. If the time finished and you could not submit the full number, at least give me something. Because if I don't find someone has the full answer correct, I will give to the best answer that I have uh, among all of you. So try to submit something. Okay, how many uh, decimal places? This is a very uh, good question. Uh, I would say uh, for the decimal places, please uh, go up to uh, 10, okay? So after the radix, have 10 numbers. And, and this is uh, the reason I ask you to solve this question. There is something interesting in that. We will learn it also through exercise. So you need to find for the two, two, six, three. And for the point I'm assuming that you, you somehow you cover this topic somewhere, either maybe in high school a little bit or uh, maybe at the university. 
uh, that's my understanding that that's not completely a new topic for you that changing from decimal to binary or from binary to to uh, decimal point so it's sort of revision but this will take us to something more important which is how the numbers are represented for the computer because it's not just decimal to binary there is more into it we are taking this step by step Two more minutes. Uh, how many decimal places after the radix have 10 numbers, 10 bits? Okay, so you will have 10 bits after the radix. Before the radix, it doesn't, you have to have the full number, but uh, for, because you have to have the full representation for the real number. But after the radix, you need to have 10 numbers. Okay, so we have like 18 students completed. That's excellent. That's really good. So I have last minute. You guys, so you are give me a tough homework to go through all of this, which is good. The whole idea that we want to learn here, so it's a, it's a good thing, it's a good thing. And uh, being online, we have, I have to get, uh, to come up with certain ways to get you involved in the class. Because if you just listen to me, it, it's boring. You don't see me, so it's really not very much attractive. So I thought I will bring something like this in almost every class. Uh, so that uh, you get more involved uh, with the course. Sometimes I might ask questions that are even faster that you can answer them right away, and I will ask you to write them in the uh, in the uh, chat, chat. So uh, that's also uh, another way of giving bonus questions. Sometimes I might give you the question and ask you to after the class to submit. So we will have all forms of bonus questions, but these, some students get two, three percent added to their final grade, which is really good, can help a lot. Okay, so I will uh, stop here at 11.55. They will not accept any submission uh, in Dropbox. So if you have anything, please submit it right now. Uh, so we have around 37. Wow, ah, that's, that is really amazing. This is really good, okay. so. Uh, so we stopped at 11.55, so okay, so it seems that you guys are knowing what you are doing, so 263, I will just divide it by uh, 2 as we know, and keep the reminder here, so this is 131, reminder 1, 2, this is 65, uh, this is 1, then 2, then becomes 32, 2, this is one and then becomes uh, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1, then finally 0. So you will have here uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So the number going from here up would become equal to the uh, real part of it 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so this is the 263. Now the point three is something interesting there. So it's point three times two is equal to point six. This is zero. Then point six times two, this is equal to one point two. So we have one point two times two, which is point four, which is zero. Point uh, four times two, which is point eight, again zero. Point eight times two is one point six, which is one. Point six times two is equal to one point two. It is another one, and then point two times two equal to point four and zero. And here, what you notice now, we start to have a repetition. So after zero one, this is zero zero one one. You will have again zero zero one one because here it is point four. You expect this to be zero, etc. So you will have the number becomes zero 
one for the decimal zero zero one one zero zero one one zero zero one one you don't need even to do the calculations and the way sometimes we write this is point zero one zero zero one one and we put this line to show that this is repeated so the whole number will become one zero 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 one 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 dot zero one zero zero one one and this would be sufficient to show that this is repeated forever okay i have one question here let me address it sir due network issue i could not send my answer sorry about that but uh, you will have uh, more very uh, many many times uh, you will have the chance to uh, uh, to have bonus questions if you miss it this time don't worry about it we will have other other chances okay so now let's let's go back to our topic here and talk about the floating point representation which is how the numbers are really represented in the computer it's not basically just from decimal to binary no there is much more than this so we'll start by talking about the scientific notation which is the second step and to to start with the scientific notation, we'll go back to the base 10 of our decimal system. So we like to, instead of writing 256.78, to keep only one number before the decimal and the rest after the decimal times 10 to the power two. And we will see in few slides why we are doing this. What is the benefit of doing this? Uh, also this number, 0.000367 so I can move the uh, decimal backward three uh, three steps here so it becomes 3.678 times 10 to minus uh, 3 I can have also a negative number which is equal to this uh, so now the number for me has three parts and this is what I will feed to the computer uh, the sign of the number the mantissa, so this is the sign of the number. Uh, this is the mantissa, we call it, and this is the exponent. So I need to enter these only to uh, represent the uh, number. So this is, for example, here, the mantissa is 2.5678, and epsilon is equal, uh, the sign is minus 1, and the exponent is equal to, is equal to 2. Okay, now why we are doing this? What is the advantage of doing this? Uh, let's assume hypothetically that you have a fixed register. And this fixed register, like the old registers, uh, you have one, two, three for the real number and two digits for the decimal. That's all you have, okay? And you want to represent the number the classical way the way we know it so the smallest number you can have is 000.00 the largest number is 999.99 so that's the uh, this is the biggest so we can have only here 10 to the power 3 of different numbers from uh, 0 to 999.9 so it's around 10 to power 3 that's what we can represent now let's see if we use the mantissa and the exponent. We use the same five uh, registers. Now, I will use the last number for the exponent and those number for the mantissa, okay? And I know that my number will have always one decimal after the first number, so I don't need to worry about it. So for example, a number like this, uh, 1.243 times 10 to power four, I know that there is a decimal after the first number, so I can enter the whole number, okay? Knowing that there is a decimal. If I have something like uh, 2.64 times 10 to minus four, whatever, then always there is uh, a number, okay? Now, this number, I, I wanna go from, again, from zero to what is the largest number I can have, this is like a, a cash register or something. Then here, the smallest number I can have is 0, 0, 0, 0, and 10 to the power 0, which is the 0, okay? 
And the largest number I can have is 9999, which is 9.999, because we know that after this is the scientific notation. And this is 9, so we can have up to 10 to the power of 10. So without increasing the capacity to store numbers, by moving from the regular representation of numbers into the scientific representations, I can increase the amount of data I can have is from 10 to power 3 to 10 to the power 10, which is a big advantage. Uh, the decimal, I don't need to put it here. Why? Because I already know in a scientific notation there is always a dot after the first number, always. If you go back here, always there is a number here. There is a decimal after the first number. So this is how we make the uh, the uh, the uh, scientific notation. So I don't need to store it because I already know that there is a dot here. So there is no need to store this number. Okay. Uh, so this is the advantage of what we call the floating number representation. Uh, we can, as you can see here, the floating number can actually increase the numbers that we can, we can store. Now, with the same idea, now we will not store the numbers as decimal representation, instead we will, we will uh, store them as binary. So with this exactly the same concept, we will, uh, we will store the floating, we call it the floating point representation. Uh, okay, now we will have again the sign of the number, the mantissa, but instead of having 10 to the power of, we will have 2 to the power of, which is the integer exponent of 2 to the power. So we, uh, we need to store these three numbers, this number, this number and this number. Now there are several standards. Uh, IEEE, I think, 745 or 54, I forgot, uh, that is used to store the numbers. So we have we have what we call the single precision or 32 bits numbers, and has the first layout. It's 32 bits to represent any number. So one bit for the sign. And the convention in the standard is zero if you have a positive number, one if you have a negative number. So the first bit is stored for the, for the number. Then you have eight bits for the exponent, and then 23 uh, bits for the, for the mantissa. A second representation there is called double precision, which is the most commonly used one nowadays, uh, which is 64 bits and has the following layout. It is one bit for the sign of the number. Again, zero means positive, one means negative. 11 bits for the exponent and 52 bits for the mantis. The question is, is it just simply putting these number, converting them to binary? It's a bit more than that. And what, this is what we will be learning uh, today and on Thursday. It's not just putting the numbers, although I will start with this, but then I will show you that how actually the numbers are uh, stored in the, in the computer. Now, to show a 32 or 64 bit, it's a huge number, it's a very large, it's very difficult to, to show it to you. So we will invent our own hypothetical 8-bit number. It's not 32, it's not 64, but you, you will get the idea. It is the same thing, the same concept. 8-bit, maybe this is like 40, 30 years ago, when the just computer started, we have 8-bit, then 16, then 32, then 64 bits. Okay, so assume that we are even having this magic uh, time machine and we went back in, in, in time and we have this uh, very old computers or we just invent that for the sake of understanding. So this is how it is, uh, uh, or this is the first way of doing this. So we will have uh, eight bits, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first one is the sign of the number the second one is the sign of the exponent, because the exponent could be positive, could be negative. Uh, 
Then the three numbers for the exponent, and then the three other three numbers is for the mentation. So assume that this number does exist, and now we want to see how I can represent my number in the computer. And the best thing is to do that is to solve a question. So assume that we want to uh, convert this number minus 13.9 from base 10 to an 8-bit floating point. So now we have three different things or three different conversion process. First, I need to convert from decimal to binary and then convert from binary representation into to a scientific notation in the binary system. And then from there, I will go for the 8-bit floating point. And we will do that, and that will be the last thing we will do in our class uh, today. So we'll start with the 13. This is the first thing, as we did last time. So I don't need to go uh, through the process. Uh, so this is equal to 1, 1, 0, 1, and base of 2. So this is the, uh, the 13. Okay, and you can, easy, this is 8, 4, 0, 1, so it is actually 13, okay? And then the point 9, uh, it's equal approximately, just to give you some approximation here, it is uh, point 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. Okay, so this is base 2 for point 9. So the minus, 13.9 will approximately equal to 1101 radix. Of course, there's a minus sign here. And this is equal to 11100. Uh, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, I have a question here. Let me see the question. Uh, it says here, uh, where is the decimal point? Okay, now this is not, uh, number two's complement negative binary. Uh, no two's complement. I don't understand the question. See the uh, until the end. And if you have a question, please uh, send the question again. And here it is. I think this is a problem here. Ah, okay, I got that. Okay, so this is equal to minus one one zero one point one 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 zero zero. Okay. Okay, so this is the number now we have. So we change this into a number. Now I want to change this from the binary representation into what? Into a scientific notation. So we need to move the decimal three points. One, two, three, because we have to have it always one number there. So this becomes equal to one point, again minus, one point, uh, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, times two to the power of three. Okay, so I changed first from 13.9 into a binary number, and then the binary number has, I changed that into uh, my scientific uh, notation. I, I, will, I will answer the questions after I finish my example, I will answer. Now I am set to enter this into my hypothetical eight, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so the first one is the sign of the number. And we said that if the number is negative, it is one. If the number is positive, it's zero. So this is, so this would becomes one. The second one is the sign of the exponent, which is the, uh, here, the, it's positive. So this becomes equal to zero. And then we will have the exponent the exponent will become equal to 3. So it is, uh, this is uh, the sign of 
the exponent. Then we have the exponent, which is uh, 0, 1, 1. So this is the 3 in the exponent. Whatever left now, I will enter the number. Now, I know for sure that always before the radix, there is a 1. There's always a 1 before, because if there's 0, I will move it. Okay, so there is this number is always one, so I don't need to store it. So what I will store, I will store these three numbers after the radix, because I will know that, or the computer knows that there is a one point always, all the time. So this becomes one, zero, one, and this is the Mantessa. So this is how we enter the computer. Not exactly, this is exactly how. There is another trick, I will talk about it in next class. So now my number has changed to this representation. Okay, this is the number now becomes inside the computer. Okay, now I want to see if I want to go back to the original number, how much do I get from this one? Okay, so this is my number now, minus 1.101, because I took only three numbers. So this is my number now, because I truncate everything else, because I have 2 times 2 to the power of 3. So this is, this is my exponent and everything. So if I want to change this number back, you will find that this number is actually is equal to minus 30 only. So I lost the 0.9 in the process. And this is, tells us why we go for 32-bit, because I need to have much more space for the Mantessa and for the exponents. No, uh, this, this, is, this is because of the number approximation. So, so this is a round of error. It's not truncation error. Truncation error, again, is an error due to a mathematical process, integration. I need to have a finite number of uh, uh, rectangular to represent the area. Okay? Uh, differentiation, I have to have a specific delta x number. I cannot go for zero, so I have to reduce it to a very small number. So this is a truncation error. It's due to the mathematical process. But when we do a round off in the number, as we did here, it's called round off, round off uh, error. I have here, which is propagation of errors. It's a very uh, simple uh, topic. Now, we, we have talking about propagation, uh, the errors due to the number representations and the error during to the arithmetic uh, operation uh, because of the approximation we do of integration, uh, differentiation, the, uh, any type of uh, uh, iteration there is, uh, in the process itself, there is an error. And the way you represent the number itself, there is also an error. There is something else. Which is okay. This is this is the error in that specific number happened. But as we do more and more uh, mathematical manipulation, the error will start to propagate, and it will start to magnify itself. So it's not just limited to that. As you add and you subtract and divide, then the error will start to increase more and more. And it's very important to uh, understand. So as we know that they are not made with exact number, all the, the calculations. So how this will, will, will propagate? So let's start with addition and subtraction. So uh, assume that we have uh, two uh, measured, or here not necessarily measured. This, uh, by the way, this topic is, is taught by both people who are studying numerical methods and people who are studying something related to experimental measurements. It's exactly the same thing. Because when you do the, do the numerical simulation, there is an error. Now we understand from where it comes because of the limitations of the numbers system in the computer and because of the approximation of the mathematical uh, uh, manipulation uh, that we do in the computer, okay? But also when you do measurement as well, uh, you, when you measure a voltage, let's say, it's 15.2, it's not 15.2, it's maybe 15.2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 5, 
God knows for how many decimals. Depends on how accurate is your device. So there is always an error in the measurement. So there is always what we call uncertainty uh, in the measurement, and this is what we call the plus minus uncertainty. And we have learned how to specify the uncertainty in the measurement in your uh, in your uh, circuit course in the lab. Uh, but also there is uncertainty in the simulation as well. And the concept of error propagation uh, it's the same for both measurement and simulation. Uh, so suppose now we want to add z, which is x plus y. So uh, how to find this z? What is the bound? This z goes from what value to what value? So basically, here you just add the error. That's all. So f for example, uh, and also if you subtract, you will also add the error. And this sounds weird. Why we don't we why we add the error? I will demonstrate that in an example. So, for example, here I want to add z is equal to x plus y, and I want to find m x minus y. Okay, so I want to find uh, x itself is 2.5 plus minus 0 0.05. This is the error in x, and this error as again it comes it could come from uh, uh, some sort of uh, um, uh, numbers. Okay, and y equal to 2.4 plus minus 0 0.02. Uh, let me finish this, and I will answer all your questions after I finish. It's just a few slides, and then I will answer all you. But please, go ahead and write all your questions. But once I, I'm done with the, with, the, with the examples and the three situations we'll have, I will answer all your questions. So basically, you, wanna, you need to find what is z. Without an error, you add x plus y. Now, this error is not percentage. This error is a value. Okay. So here we found we are found, we we are expressing x and y. When it comes, uh, can you solve the bonus uh, question? Okay. The bonus. I will do that at the end of the lecture. Okay. I will do that. Okay. So it's x plus y. So this uh, will equal to uh, 2.5 plus 2.4, which is 4.9. Okay. Now I want to find the error delta z. As we said, we just add the error. So it's 0 0.04 plus 0 0.2, which is 0 0.06. So actually, z is equal to 4.9 plus and minus 0 0.06. Now, if I want to find m, you subtract the 2, 2.5 minus 2.4, which is 0 0.1. And then m itself becomes 0 0.1 plus minus, again, the 0 0.06. Now, why we add the error in the subtraction? Because the error. Here, the error could be positive, plus 0 0.04, and the error in y could be the minus 0 0.02. So when you subtract, you are adding the error. So you always go for the worst case scenario. So this is why we are adding the error even in subtraction or in addition. Let's move on to the multiplication and division. Now, again, let's have the same example. We have x and y, and each x and y, they have their own error. Now, when we do the calculations of the error, we do it as a percentage, not as an absolute value. When you multiply, okay, then delta z, which is the error in z divided by z, equal to delta x, which is the error in x divided by x, plus delta y divided by y. We, not, we don't just simply add the error, but we took the percentage. If I multiply this with 100, then this becomes percentage of delta z equal to percentage of delta x plus percentage of delta y. And the same thing for the division. When you do the division, also you add the percentage of the error. So let's say, take this example. Uh, I have certain distance, 8.5, and there is an error, 0.05 meter, and time, 3.5 seconds, uh, plus minus 2.02 uh, seconds. I want to find the speed, which is the division. So basically, I will find the speed without the error. Same thing, S, D over T, which is 8.5 divided by 3.5, and this is equal to 2.5. Or three meter per per second. Now we will apply find the error, which is delta s over s equal to delta d over d 
plus delta t over t. Now, everything I know, delta s is the only thing that I don't know. This is the unknown, which is the error in s. Okay, so delta s, which I, I need to find, divide by s, which I just calculate, equal to delta t, which is the error in d, 0 0.05, divided by the d value, 8.5, so here it is a percentage, plus 0.02 divided by 3.5, so this is just one unknown, so you will find that your delta s is equal to 0 0.02. 282. So from this, you can say that S is equal to 2.43 plus minus the 0 0.0282. As simple as that. As I said, this propagation of error is a very uh, straightforward concept. The last one, what if we are multiplying, uh, dividing something with a power? So Z is equal to X to the power of M times Y to the power of N. I could divide x to the power of m divided by y to the power of n, but then I can convert it back to multiplication because n it will be to the power of minus 1. Okay, So basically, it's again, you add the percentage of the error, but here you multiply with the absolute value of the exponent, here m and here n. So you take out the effect of the sign. There's no sign there. Okay, Again, a very straightforward example here. I want to find W, which is equal to T squared divided by root of A, okay? Or W basically is equal to T squared times A to the power of minus one half. Again, we have everything. So first we do the calculations without the error. So W just substitute with 3.4 for 3.0 for T, 4.52 for A. Uh, find the value, which is will be become equal to 4.23. And then delta uh, W over W will equal to the exponent 2 times delta T over T plus, now this is 2, and this is 1 half, sign will go out of delta A over, over A. Everything I know. I know W, which is 4.23. I know delta T, which is 0.6. I know T, which is 3. I know delta A which is 0 0.02, and I know A. So from this, I can find your delta W, which is equal to 1.701. So now my measurement W will equal to 4.23 with this uncertainty, 1.7001. So this is how the error propagates. It's very, very straightforward. Uh, now let's go back to the bonus questions that you asked me to, uh, to solve. Why did you leave the, the, the formula is, uh, is that the formula you take it's the absolute value. This is how I don't want to go through the derivation why it is the absolute value, but you take it for granted. It's just the absolute value of the of the error, not not the sign of the error. You don't sub always the error add to each other. You don't subtract the the error. Let me just go through uh, your uh, questions here. Let me go back and check all your answer, and then uh, let me just go one by one. Are delta x and y number or percentage? As I mentioned, x and y are numbers in addition, subtraction, and percentage in multiplication and in uh, division. How does biasing the exponent affect the problem of two zeros? I don't understand the question. If you can elaborate more, or you can uh, give more elaboration in Piazza or email. Can you solve the bonus question? Yes, I will do. Why did you leave out the negative for the half? I, as I mentioned, it's the absolute value. Should we keep same number of signed figures, significant figures for uncertainty and the uh, value? Now, this depends on uh, if you want to add the significant values and uh, uh, into this, uh, if you are talking about propagation of error, then it will become even probably more and more complicated.